Welcome. In this lecture, I will explain the concept of the response spectrum. This is a tool that can help us interpret the effects of an earthquake on the structures we design. Earthquakes are random events with a wide range of effects on structures. The dynamic characteristics of the structures, the local site effects, the frequency content of the seismic ground motion influence the earthquake response of structures. A response spectrum is a tool that shows the maximum response of structures to specific earthquake records and gives a general view to understand which type of structures are mostly affected. Single degree of freedom systems with different dynamic properties representing structures with different natural vibration periods and critical damping ratios are selected. They are analyzed by an earthquake record taken from a certain location. The peak response being either the acceleration, velocity or displacement of each single degree of freedom system is plotted versus the natural period of the single degree of freedom system. This is repeated for many different single degree of freedom systems and the graph is obtained as can be seen in the figure. With the help of a response spectrum, an interpretation can be made on whether high rise or low rise or rigid or flexible structures, structures are mostly affected during the event. So the characteristics of a response spectrum can be summarized as follows. First of all, a response spectrum can be obtained for a certain earthquake recorded at certain location. Therefore, there can be numerous response spectrums for a specific earthquake, which are derived from records at different locations. Effects of source mechanism, distance from the epicenter, soil types on the way from the epicenter to the recording station are all reflected in a response spectrum. Furthermore, a response spectrum shows which type of structures can face possible resonance effects and which type of structures face dampening depending on the location and site characteristics of the structures. Resonance is amplification of the effects when the period of vibration and the period of the structure is equal or very close to each other. And finally, each spectrum is derived for a specific critical damping ratio. Since critical damping ratio for most of the structures is around 5%, it is mostly derived for 5% of critical damping ratio. Depending on the earthquake and site effects, the response of structures will vary. This graph shows how three different buildings with different dynamic characteristics, from rigid to flexible, are affected by an earthquake. Two earthquake records were taken from different locations during the same earthquake. Location A represents the response spectrum of a system resting on stiff soil, and location B shows the response of the same system resting on soft soil. It can be seen that response of buildings 1 and 2 drastically change depending on where they are located. Building 3 has minimal difference compared to the two specified locations. This phenomenon is sometimes taken into account by city planners and restrictions may be set for maximum or minimum heights of the buildings which will have a major impact on the period of the building. Design response spectrums given in seismic design codes are used to calculate seismic demand on the structures. They are formed based on the collection of a large amount of historical seismological data. Probabilistic seismic hazard studies are carried out to determine the seismic hazard, considering that the average lifetime of a standard building is around 50 years. The design seismic hazard level is generally defined as 10% probability of exceedance in 50 years. This can also be described as a hazard with a 475 year return period. It is impossible to define a spectrum for each location for every possible earthquake. A design spectrum is a kind of corrected envelope of measured spectra of specific earthquakes and it is defined for a specific area and is dependent on the local soil conditions. The vertical axis gives spectral acceleration and horizontal axis the period of the structure. 
it starts with peak ground acceleration, where period is zero. Design spectra are normally built up in three parts. First, there is an increasing part, which is normally a linear function. Then there is the plateau, that is the top line showing the maximum acceleration value. Corresponding periods for the plateau changes depending on the site class. For stiff soil conditions, these values are relatively small, and for soft soil conditions, they are higher. Period of a building is very much related to the number of floors. When the number of floors increases, the period also increases, which means that in stiff soils, low-rise buildings, and in soft soils, high-rise buildings will have high possibility to experience resonance effects. And finally, there is the decreasing part, which is normally a function of 1 over the period of the structure. In this example, graph at left is the elastic design spectrum given in Eurocode 8, where S, TB, TC, and TD are site class dependent parameters. Graph B shows elastic design spectrum for five different soil types, A through E, defined in Eurocode 8. A is the soil that is most stiff, and it continues to E, which is the most soft soil. It can be seen that peak acceleration values and characteristic period values TB and TC increase when soil gets softer. And this is the elastic spectrum given in NPR 9998-2015. The main difference between NPR and Eurocode elastic spectrums is the definition of ground accelerations. Eurocode uses peak ground acceleration as a parameter to form the spectrum, whereas NPR uses two different input parameters, short period spectral acceleration, SS, and spectral acceleration at one second, period, S1. These are converted to design spectral acceleration values by multiplying with side coefficients, FA and FB. And the critical points of the spectrum are calculated using these spectral acceleration values, as can be seen from the graph. When designing structures using design codes, the most widely used methods refer to response spectrum. The lateral forces are calculated by selecting the spectral acceleration value that corresponds with the natural period of the structure being designed. As you can see in the graph, SET1 is the design spectral acceleration for the structure with the period T1. This was a brief introduction to response and design spectrums. Next session will be on analysis methods. Thank you.